every object has a center of mass or a point on an object where a single force will not produce a torque. Now it's hard to think about a single force acting on an object because we're so used to everything on Earth having the force of gravity and potentially another applied force. So let's think about an object out in space. If you were to take an object, any object, out in space, and you were to apply just a single force to its center of mass, think about it as if you're pushing on an object at its center of mass, then that object would not rotate if you applied that force at the center of mass. The center of mass of a uniform object, that's one that has its mass evenly distributed and a uniform object that is regularly shaped, something like a sphere or a square or a long stick, that center of mass would be located at the center of your object. For example, the center of mass of a meter stick is located at the meter stick center or at the 50 centimeter mark. Sometimes the center of mass is actually not on the object itself. For example, if you think of a coffee mug, the center of mass of that coffee mug is somewhere inside the coffee mug, the place where you put pour the coffee. For the purposes of our class, we'll focus on regularly shaped objects with uniform mass distribution. So the center of mass will be located at the center of the object, unless you're told otherwise. The center of mass matters for a couple of reasons. To understand the first thing about why the center of mass matters, let's watch the short video. In the first part of this video, you saw three objects being tossed under white light and you just saw them go up in the air and rotate a bit as they followed a projectile path. Now you'll see that they'll be tossing those same objects, but this time they'll have black lights and that center of mass is painted orange. That means that you should only be able to see the center of mass and not the rest of the object. Hopefully from that last demonstration, you could tell that when they painted the center of the object, that kind of wiggled a bit. You could see that it was rotating as it moved. But from the other portion where they uh, painted the center of mass, you could see that that center of mass followed a perfectly projectile path. When something is traveling through the air, the center of mass is what follows the projectile path while the remainder of your object rotates around it. That means that the center of mass, when something is traveling through the air, is acting as the axis of rotation. One other fact about the center of mass. And that's how the center of mass affects torque problems. Because if we're trying to find the net torque, or really the torque uh, in general, the torque done by the force of gravity can be found using the fact that force of gravity acts at an object's center of mass. So when we're doing torque problems and we're trying to label all those forces on a force diagram, we'll need to identify where the center of mass is located and that's where we will draw our force of gravity vector. 